Aloha everyone. Welcome back to Kaimana Conservation, the channel where we talk about the ocean and everything ocean related. For those of you guys that haven't been here before, my name is Jessica. I'm a professional marine biologist that lives on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Today we're going to be going tide pooling. I was really surprised how popular the tide pooling videos were going to be um, and I've been asked to do several more. Many of you guys have already watched the tide pooling videos. I've done two other ones at this point. The first one that I did was in La Perouse, which is all the way down in South Maui um, at the last lava flow. So that was my first one. The second one uh, I did at sunset a little bit closer to home at Sugar Beach or Kealia Beach, um, which is in North Kihei. That's the longest beach on Maui, but it does have some uh, tide pools that are only available when it is low, low tide. Instead of going south again for tide pools, we're going to head up north this time. So we're going to be heading over to the North Shore today. See you guys there. folks we just made it to Ho'okipa Beach which is just past Paia on the North Shore um, I'm actually really surprised the waves are pumping right now we've had a lot of south swell recently so usually when we have a lot of south swell the North Shore is a little bit more subdued but the surfers are out in full this morning so we're gonna walk over to the bluff here in just a second we're just a little bit further back you can see the cattle pastures behind me um, but I love stopping up here at the top of the bluff first before we go down to the beach itself because because um, especially on days like today you've got really high surf is so fascinating to watch not only the surfers but just the sheer power of those waves that are coming in this channel is actually named after the strength of the ocean uh, if you guys didn't know that Kai means water and mana means power so it is really really cool to see it firsthand let's go check it out down the hill now hopefully you guys can hear this the waves are pretty loud but um, I want to show you guys something a little bit further down the bluff um, there's a small portion of this beach that is known for its turtles you can see turtles pretty much anywhere around the island especially in the water but there are only a few places that turtles prefer to come out of the water and bask or suntan on the beach and this is one of them so we're gonna head down the hill now hopefully I can spot you guys some turtles and uh, we'll get a closer look once we get down to the beach way to see the north side of Ho'okipa and all the turtles. I hope you guys like that. I never get tired of seeing turtles. 
Although, um, because of the strong tides that we're getting with our north swell, there were signs everywhere saying, you know, be careful in the water, rip current. Obviously, I don't want to lose my camera or fall on my face. Um, so we have gone down the beach just a little bit. And um, at the very other end of the beach is more like the baby beach. So I'm going to be hanging out in the toddler section today because it is the safest thing to do. I wouldn't be much of an ocean advocate if I was telling you guys to hop into the water where it's not safe. So we're going to be hanging out in the tide pools that is a little bit more family friendly, seeing what we can find there. And uh, I'll see you guys in the water. like this where it tumbles around a lot you find mostly shell fragments. we made it back to the car it is a warm one today I'm glad we went early um, I didn't get a chance to do as much tide pooling as I was intending to do um, based off of the weather reports I was expecting there to be more south swell less north swell which is why I picked this spot but as you guys could see from all of those wave videos and all the surfers out here uh, yeah no we still had some pretty intense waves up here on the North Shore that being said I did use my telephoto lens so we could admire some of the tide pool animals from afar and we still saw some really cool stuff always invertebrates when it comes to tide pools um, so we saw lots of snails a couple of crabs which was really cool there was a hermit crab that was in a shell that was quite interesting it looked like the remnants of a polychaete worm and when the polychaete worm dies off it leaves this like really hard almost cement like tube uh, underneath of the water um, in the sand, but the crabs can sometimes find that and repurpose it for themselves. So that was really cool. We also saw a bunch of helmet urchins today right along the wave line. Nothing I could get super close to to pull out of the water and show you guys, but you might remember from my first tide pool video that um, we had a little demo uh, out of the water with the helmet urchin. They have a flat spine um, that's modified to be able to handle all of that wave action. So it makes tons of sense that the predominant urchin that we saw there was the helmet because this 
is known for being a wee, really, really wavy beach. And then last but not least, we saw a snowflake eel hunting around in the shallows. That was really cool. I wasn't expecting to see an eel, especially one of that size, that shallow in. Snowflake eels are one of the only eels that will hunt in tide pools. Usually uh, other eels, especially larger ones, will go and do that more offshore. So that was a really cool little tide pool find. Um, also very impressive that he was able to withstand all of that wave action as well. Every time a wave hit, I'd have to wait because I lost sight of him on the surface. And uh, when I refound him, he was always in a slightly different spot. So he was using the waves to move around and probably to shake up his food as well. So that was pretty cool. I actually leaned a little bit more towards videoing the limu or the Hawaiian seaweed. You guys may have noticed the Hawaiian culture really revered limu um, in both aquaculture or uh, farming basically underwater farming also medicinal practices that was food it was food for their food so there were some really really cool limus that we saw there so I'll uh, hopefully have added little labels at the bottom of the video so you guys will know what you're looking at alrighty guys I'm gonna go ahead and call it a day as you guys can probably see I am sweating it was a very very toasty and I've already finished all of my water that I brought with me so I'm gonna head into Paia and get an acai bowl and some breakfast and I will see you guys around next time thanks for joining me mahalo